Hey everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Nikki LaFoyle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a cozy for your to go coffee cups because sometimes these little cardboard ones just don't cut it. So it's a quick and easy project, a good scrap buster. And in the description of this video, there's a link. If you click on that link, you'll be able to download the PDF that has full instructions, supplies list, and the template to make this project. And if you are watching live and you have any questions, type them into the comment section and I'll get those and get them answered for you. So let's jump in and we'll talk about the supplies list. Like I said, it's very easy, not many supplies needed. And I say in the supplies list, you'll need a quarter yard of fabric, but you really don't even need that much. Um, I think you'll be able to reach into your scraps and find enough for this little template. And you can see the template, I cut it on the, or I drew it on the fold so that you'll be able to cut your fabric on the fold and get pieces that look like this. So we'll need uh, two pieces of cotton fabric. And what I did is I did my pretty fabric for my outer. And then on the inside, like the lining, since you're not gonna be able to see it, I cut my uh, uh, less, less pretty kind of plain fabric because you're not gonna be able to see it. So they're both cotton. So I have my two pieces and you'll need a piece cut out of an insulating layer so that the, your boiling hot coffee does not seep through and burn your fingers. And you can use for your insulating layer, you can use batting, you can use uh, fleece. I used, uh, you can use flannel. I used fleece because I happen to have scraps of it. But anything that has a little bit of loft to it, a little, you know, fluffiness to it is going to be a good insulator because it traps air and air is the best insulator. So anything you have that's a little bit thick, a little bit lofty, you can use an old towel even, just something um, to trap that air and that'll be a good insulator. So you'll need one to cut out one um, from your insulating layer of your template. So here's our, so we have three. Now, if you want to do this little hand sleeve, I call it, kind of like a little handle to hold on to, it's totally optional. You don't have to do it. You can just create a nice flat cozy and it'll be just like your cardboard ones. But if you want to do this little hand sleeve, you're gonna need two more pieces of fabric. You're going to need two little strips that are one and three quarter by five and one quarter inches. And I did the same thing with mine. I did my outer and my lining fabric different. You can do them the same, however you wanna do it. So those are all the pieces we need. You'll also need a little piece of elastic, about two and a half inches long. I like to use quarter inch wide elastic because when you sew over it, um, it's it's easy to know that your needle is biting into the elastic. With cord elastic, sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes your needle can accidentally jump over the cord. But if you have cord elastic and that's what you want to use, that is totally fine too. That'll work. And I have a little tip for you on making sure as you're sewing over the elastic that we're really biting that and making sure it is secure. You will also need a button. Where's my button? You'll need a half inch or three quarter inch diameter button. It's around here somewhere. I will find it. Um, and that's all we need for our project. So our first step is to sew our uh, optional hand sleeve. So I'm going to change my uh, camera here so that you can see what I'm doing. So here's our hand sleeve pieces. We want to put these right sides together. 
and we're just going to stitch each long edge. We're gonna leave both short edges open. I'm gonna put a pin or two in. And we are using quarter inch seam allowances. And back stitching at the beginning. And back stitching at the end. And then flip it around and we're gonna stitch the other long edge. Now we're gonna turn this right side out and give it a press. So we're gonna get this turned right side out through that open short edge, and then give that a press, making sure that that seam is right at the edge of the fabric. I actually have one that I already pressed nice and flat. And I like to top stitch as well. I'm gonna top stitch each long edge because I just, I love the look of top stitching. It makes it look nice and flat and professional. And I like to bump my stitch length up a little bit for top stitching. My machine defaults to 2.5 millimeter stitch length. I'm gonna bump that up to a three for my top stitching. And I'm just top stitching each long edge about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And it's very subtle, this the difference that the top stitching makes, but I love it. It just kind of, it keeps everything nice and flat. So there's our hand sleeve. Now we're going to take our outer cozy, whatever fabric you're using for your outer, maybe you're doing both the same, which is fine. So we're going to place our hand sleeve on our outer fabric. And I think I say in the directions like about three inches from one short edge, but you can kind of eyeball it. I like to go at about a third. So if we kind of break this into thirds, we want our hand sleeve at about a third. And we're gonna align the raw edges of the hand sleeve with the raw edges of the cozy at the upper edge and the lower edge. And put some pins in here. To secure that. So we got our raw edges here and then we have to kind of fold this up to get the raw edges aligning at the bottom. Okay, so we've got a bunch kind of going on here. So you want to make sure that when we put our sandwich together, that this extra bit doesn't get accidentally caught anywhere. So you can even sort of fold that down and put a little pin in it. So 
make sure it doesn't accidentally get caught in something it shouldn't. Okay, so there's our hand sleeve. Now we're gonna take our lining fabric, and mine doesn't really have a right or a wrong side, but if yours does, we wanna make sure we go right sides together. And we're going to sandwich that. Now we wanna make sure we get our elastic sandwiched between these fabrics. So your elastic chunk, you wanna fold it in half and you can fold it in half flat like this, or you can fold it in half like this as you would a ribbon, however you wanna do it. Dealer's choice. And we're gonna put that um, between the layers centered on what on the short edge that is nearest to the hand sleeve. So we're aligning the raw edges centered here. I'm just eyeballing it. And put a pin in. And I'm going to pin the perimeter making sure my raw edges stay aligned. Actually, before I get too far in pinning, I wanna pin this layer in as well. So our insulating layer gets layered on top of our lining layer. So I'll put my pins through that as well. Make sure all my raw edges stay aligned. Now I'm going to stitch this perimeter, but we do need to leave an opening for turning everything right side out. And personally, I like to leave my opening whenever possible along a straight edge because it's just a little bit easier when you turn everything right side out and you go to tuck those seam allowances back into the opening. It seems like it's a little easier to do that evenly and nice and flat along a straight edge. But if you want, this curve is kind of nice and gentle. If you wanted to leave your opening down here, that would be fine too. So I'm going to leave my opening right here. We only need an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So I'm going to start stitching right about here and pivot around there, go around and then stop right about here. And I don't want to leave the whole short edge open because then when I turn it right side out, it's kind of tricky to get these corners nice and nice and crisp. So I'm just leaving in between these two pins. So I'm stitching half inch, three quarter inch on each side of my opening here. All right, I'm gonna bump my stitch length back down to my 2.5 default. And again, we're doing a quarter inch seam allowances. And I'm back stitching at each side of my uh, opening. And I'm actually, I'm using a fop. So I, this is a, uh, they call it an integrated dual feed foot that fop has on their machines. Because I have so many layers and one of my layers is kind of lofty, I'm gonna engage that. And that works kind of like a walking foot to help all my layers feed evenly. So I'm stopping with the needle down a quarter inch from my next edge and I'm going to pivot around and keep on going.
and you can feel where your hand sleeve is. If you've chosen to do a hand sleeve, you can feel the bulk of that. So I like to just, you know, peek and make sure everything's still aligned and kind of just go slow over that. up to another corner so we're going to stop a quarter inch from the next edge and pivot and if when you pivot you find you haven't gone quite far enough and this is a little bit more than a quarter inch you can pivot back around and take another stitch and I'm going to bump my stitch length down a little bit to take that last stitch to get right at my quarter inch seam allowance. Now, here's where we're going over our elastic. I can feel that lump in here. So what I'm gonna do is when I approach that, I'm gonna bump my stitch length down a little bit. And this is especially important to do if you're using cord elastic because we wanna make sure the needle nabs that elastic good so that when we're you know wrapping our elastic around our button, to put it around our coffee cup, that elastic doesn't just pull right out of the seam. So I bump my stitch length down, and I'm gonna go over that elastic. And then when I get to the other side of the elastic, I'm gonna back stitch over it. And then when I get to the other side of it, I'm gonna stitch over it again. So we have three lines of stitching over our elastic to make it nice and secure. I'm gonna bump my stitch length back up. Here's another corner. So approach those slowly. Double check your seam allowance. Here's everything all layered together. What we're gonna do is clip our corners. And I like to even double clip on the corners that are not my opening corners. So I clipped that one and then I'm going to clip again to decrease the bulk even further along that edge. I don't wanna do that on my opening because I want those seam allowances for when I tuck them back in. But on my other corners, we'll double clip. And then through our opening, we're gonna turn everything right side out. And because we have three layers, we wanna make sure we're turning right side out between our cotton layers. You don't wanna turn between your insulating layer and your lining layer. That would not look right. So between your cotton layers, start pushing everything right side out. It's kind of a small opening. So take your time. A little bit bulky when you get to the hand sleeve to pull that through. There we 
we go. And if you put a pin in the hand sleeve, just be careful when you're pulling everything right side out. And there's my elastic. Feels nice and sturdy. If you have a point turner or a knitting needle, that is super helpful in getting these corners pushed out. You could use a pencil. Just don't use the tips of your scissors. You could poke through the fabric and damage it. So we get our corners nice and pushed out. All right, now we're gonna bring our, I'm gonna bring my iron in here and I wanna press everything nice and flat and make sure that that seam is right at the edge. So I usually kind of take it between my fingers and kind of roll it to make sure that seam is right at the edge. And then our opening seam allowances, we wanna make sure we tuck in a quarter inch so that we get a nice, flat, even edge here. All right, press it nice and flat. We have some folks watching from warmer weather. It makes me a little bit jealous. Florida, Charlotte, Arkansas. Someone watching on their lunch break. Thanks for joining. So I'm pressing my edges nice and flat, and then we're gonna top stitch around as well to give this a nice crisp flat look. Make sure you press that opening. Okay, so there we go, we're nice and flat. Now to top stitch this, if you didn't do this hand sleeve, you can just top stitch all the way around, easy peasy. But because we have this kind of in the way, what we have to do is we're gonna start top stitching, kind of push this out of the way a little bit and start right here and top stitch around and then stop. So we're gonna go as far as we can before we get caught on this hand sleeve and stop. And then spin it around and start again and go the rest of the way. So again, I'm going to bump my stitch length up to three. So I'm moving this hand sleeve out of the way. So I'm starting kind of like in the middle of the hand sleeve. And again, it's about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So we're gonna back stitch. We're going to do the same pivot around the corners as we did before. Now I'm just going to top stitch over my elastic because I'm using a quarter inch elastic. <clears throat> if you're using cord elastic and you want some extra, extra insurance that that's not going to pull out, 
you can bump your stitch length back down and back stitch over it, just like we did when we were constructing this. So I'm top stitching as far as I can before this hand sleeve gets in the way on the back stitch to secure that. I'm going to take it off of our threads. And then move the hand sleeve out of the way the other way. And pick up where we left off. Back stitch again so that locks. And this is where our opening is. So we want to make sure those seam allowances are nice and tucked in. And this is going to close up that opening. just backstitched where we started underneath that hand sleeve. I'm going to clip my threads. My scissors are squeaky. Do you hear that? Boy, <laughs> they're singing to me. Okay. <clears throat> so here, we have <clears throat> nice and top stitched, nice and flat. Now, this is going to wrap around and we just have to attach our button. Now, I, I mentioned in the instructions to go at about two and a quarter inches from uh, the, sh the sh other short edge, the short edge opposite of your elastic. But that depends totally on your size of cup. And while, you know, I I'm pretty sure this is fairly universal size of a of cup, you might want to take your cup and just double check. So you can wrap this around. And sort of audition that. I'm going to go right about here. I'm going to mark that. Oops. Mark it with a little pin. And we want to place our button centered on the, the width of this. And you can stitch your button uh, either by hand or you can do it on the machine. And the button that I chose for this, oh, there it is. There we go. It's hiding behind my computer. Okay, so you can stitch by hand, of course, or you can use your machine. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. And they make button feet. It's a little foot attachment that pops on here. This is not a button foot, but it looks like a button foot. This is actually, I think, a darning foot. But a button foot looks like this because it has this open area between the toes. But a lot of times it'll have on the bottom of it, it'll have this blue, like grippy type material so that when it sets on the button, the button won't, you know, slide all over the place. But if you don't have a button foot, you can use any foot that has a nice open area between the toes like this. Just be careful and test it with whatever button you're using to make sure 
when the button foot sits on top of the button, make sure that your needle isn't going to hit the inside of the those toes. Make sure it's wide enough that your um, needle isn't going to hit that. So I don't have a, a, a button foot that fits on my machine. So I wanted to show you how to do it without a foot at all. I just take my foot totally off my machine and I just I'm gonna align my button with my marking. And I'm just going to set that down, no foot, it's just the bar down onto that. And what I need to do actually is disengage my feed dogs because I'm going to choose a zigzag stitch and I don't want my fabric to get pulled. I want it to stay right in place. So I choose my zigzag, get my pin out of there, and be extremely careful. We're, we're turning the hand wheel here. We're not using the, the foot pedal at all. You wanna make sure your zigzag stitch is the correct width for the holes of your button. Um, if your needle starts hitting your button, you know, turn it back, turn the, pull the needle back up a little bit and adjust your width of your zigzag stitch to match the width of the buttonholes. And I'm just going, I'm turning my hand wheel, I'm going back and forth. Yeah, six, seven times. I'm gonna pull that out. Clip. And this is a four hole button, so I would do that again. And it's just the same thing. And then I have these two strings on the top from when I started and when I finished, and I'm gonna tie those off. I'm gonna do the same thing on the wrong side. If you wanted a little extra locking on these threads, you can put a dab of fray check on the threads on top and on bottom, or some people use clear nail polish even to really lock those threads. So I would do the same thing because I have a four hole button. So I've got that stitched down in two of my holes. I would do the same thing on the other two, but you get the idea. Let's take a look at it. Whoops, I did it upside down. There we go. So my, my elastic hooks around my button and I've got my little hand sleeve to hang on to my coffee to protect your hand from that hot drink. And it's super cute and reusable and it can use up some of your scraps. And this fabric is from Wyndham Fabrics. It's W-I-N-D-H-A-M fabrics.net. They have some of that sort of constellation starry sky fabric that's super, super cute. So I switch my camera back here real quick. Here we go. Quick and easy little project for your winter hot drinks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy your project and come back again for more fun fast sewing projects with me. Thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.